My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesia resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this series of educational videos for anesthesiology trainees, I explore the central components of the informed consent process for anesthesia. In this particular video, I discuss some of the most common and also some of the most serious risks associated with anesthesia that you can consider bringing into your conversations with your patients. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. And of course, this is a YouTube video, not medical advice. So if you need medical advice, talk to your doctor. Let's dive in. With rare exception like emergencies, neither anesthesia nor surgery can proceed without a patient providing their informed consent. Informed consent is more than just signing a piece of paper and proceeding with the anesthesia. It's a process that involves helping a patient understand the risks benefits and alternative to the proposed plan. Regarding anesthesia, the benefits and alternatives are typically either self-evident or pretty straightforward to explain to your patient. But the risks can be a lot less self-evident for patients and it's important to make sure that you provide an understanding of what those risks entail. As with basically anything in medicine, the complete list of known risks associated with anesthesia is so long that it would practically preclude surgery to go through all of those line by line because you'd still be talking about it with your patient tomorrow. In addition to getting through the pertinent risks of anesthesia in an efficient way, we are also challenged to present the risks which include life-threatening illness in a way that's not going to induce severe anxiety for a patient who you just met and is about to undergo a procedure. When I discuss risk with patients, I break them up into two categories that I think are helpful for conceptualizing how likely they are to occur. One of those categories is the most common but least serious risks associated with anesthesia. And by contrast, I also mentioned the most serious but least common risks associated with anesthesia. And wherever possible, I think it's important to provide statistics to give your patient a sense of how likely or not any of these risks are to occur. That statistical assessment may be in the form of a percentage out of 100 times I would expect a certain outcome. Or if I'm talking about some serious but very infrequent risk, then instead of using a large abstract number like one out of 500,000 or one out of a million, then I use something a little more tangible like a comparison to the likelihood of being in a serious car accident while driving into the hospital this morning. While the specific risks associated with your anesthetic plan are going to vary based on exactly what you're planning to do and what the patient's comorbidities are, there are some common risks that are generally applicable for most different types of anesthetics. Post-operative nausea and vomiting is a risk that comes not only from anesthesia, but also from surgical interventions. And it's important that you have reviewed what those risk factors are so that you can let patients know whether they're at a higher or relatively lower likelihood of experiencing PONV. When describing risks like PONV, you might also let patients know what you plan to do to either prophylax against those risks or how you might treat that if PONV were to occur. Another relatively common risk associated with anesthesia is corneal abrasion, which when it does happen, typically self-resolves, but it's important to let patients know when they should follow up with an ophthalmologist. Inadvertent dental injury is also an important risk to let patients know about, particularly if you have any intention of instrumenting their airway. It's estimated that one out of every 4,500 anesthetics involves dental injury that requires subsequent intervention. It's also important to let patients know if they can expect to have a sore throat for a day or two, particularly if you plan to use an endotracheal tube or a laryngeal mask airway. Don't underestimate how uncomfortable this throat soreness can be, particularly if it was a prolonged intubation or required two or three attempts. When explaining the most serious risks associated with anesthesia, it's really important to communicate to patients that you don't expect these things to happen, but because they are serious, it's important that your patients are aware that they're at least a remote possibility. Among the most serious risks, you may consider letting your patients know that awareness is extremely infrequent, but occasionally does happen, and that you'll be right there monitoring them the entire time to prevent this from happening. 
And although death related to anesthesia is an extremely uncommon occurrence, this is something that you may want to disclose to your patients. One analogy that I've heard from my colleagues is comparing undergoing anesthesia to flying on a commercial airplane, where we know that generally speaking, they're very safe experiences, but there is always a remote risk of some type of catastrophic complication happening from either one of them. That analogy can be extended to say that when flying on a commercial airplane, there's someone who's very well trained and vigilant the entire time to avoid any of those catastrophic complications. By the same token, there is someone who's very well trained, namely the anesthesiologist, who is there and vigilant the entire time to make sure that risks are avoided. If your anesthesia plan includes endotracheal intubation, you may also consider disclosing the risk of vocal cord injury, which is rare, but of course can be a devastating complication. You may also consider disclosing the relatively rare complication of neurological injury related to positioning during surgery. And while this self-resolves in the majority of cases, there are some cases where this is an ongoing issue for patients after surgery. And depending on the circumstances, you may want to let patients know that there's a possibility that they'll remain intubated after the surgery and be extubated either in the recovery room or in the intensive care unit. This is by no means a thorough review of all of the risks associated with anesthesia, and it's important to make sure that you keep in mind any special considerations like regional anesthesia or other techniques that involve their own set of risks that you need to disclose to patients. And depending on the circumstances, you may also need to consent your patient for blood transfusion. So it's important to be aware of the risks and the benefits that come along with blood transfusions and make sure that you frame them in a way as to indicate that you will only transfuse blood products if they are medically necessary. Here's an example of how I might present the risks for a young, healthy patient who's undergoing an elective abdominal surgery with general anesthesia and an endotracheal tube. While anesthesia is generally very safe, there are some important risks that I want you to be aware of, and I like to break those up into the most common risks as well as the ones that are least common but most serious. Among the more common risks is post-operative nausea and vomiting, and there are several risk factors that place you at a slightly higher than average likelihood of experiencing that. However, I will provide you with some medication to try to prevent that. I also want you to know that there is a possibility of having eye injury during or after surgery, but I don't expect that, and if it does happen, it usually goes away on its own. I also don't expect this, but on rare occasion, it's possible to accidentally cause damage to the teeth or lips while placing the breathing device to help you breathe during surgery. Along those lines, the breathing device that I'll place once you are under anesthesia sometimes can cause a sore throat that might last a day or two, so I just don't want you to be surprised. And for the sake of being thorough, I want you to be aware of some of the most serious risks associated with anesthesia, but I absolutely don't expect these to occur. One of those is awareness, but we have many different ways of making sure that patients are under anesthesia and not aware of anything during surgery. And another very rare risk that's associated with anesthesia is vocal cord damage that can result from the breathing device that we place to keep you safe during surgery. But again, this is something that I don't expect. If you found this video helpful, you may also want to check out this video where I go through how to discuss depth of anesthesia with your patients. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.